Downtown Las Vegas shuts down streets and leads to people running for their lives. We are live with the latest. Fire crews putting out a fire in downtown Las Vegas. People seen running to escape, roads closed, and is there a cause? We are live with the latest. Also, Uber drivers expected to rally over lack of pay. We're getting a better idea of what's driving the cut and how they're compensated. And Marie, all eyes on Hurricane Edalia closing in on the Big Bend region of Florida could make landfall as a category four storm. We got the latest path here with this system and it's a wild seven day forecast as we head into Labor Day weekend. The full forecast coming up next. Live from the News 3 studios in Las Vegas, this is the CW News at 10. Heavy smoke seen across the Arts District tonight. Good evening, I'm Marie Mortera. This large fire near Charleston and Las Vegas Boulevard began after 6 this evening. Our Katie Munch has been there on the scene since it began, and she joins us now live with the latest in K. This has been an hours-long firefight. Yeah, Marie, hours. Firefighters have been at it trying to put this out. Every single time it seems like they uh, have it under control and the flames are dying down, it ends up erupting again. Now, uh, very low visibility out here, but you can see these firefighters, they're working overtime. Uh, they're taking turns. Uh, some of them are taking breaks right now while the other ones are tagged in and they're handling the hose, getting water in there. They have not stopped spraying water in there, trying to get control of this fire. We know three people were rescued. One of the three residents, we're told, has been treated for smoke inhalation and was transported to the hospital in stable condition. We've spoken to several families in this area as well, and they say this commercial building has been abandoned for several years and attracts the homeless. Now, many onlookers who were here when the fire started earlier say they saw over 20 people run from the building after the fire started there are multiple agencies that are here including las vegas fire and rescue clark county fire and the bomb squad oh it's getting it's getting hard to breathe you can see how it's, it's difficult to see right now very low visibility but we spoke to somebody earlier they are very upset a resident in this area who said that this could have been avoided listen to what they had to say trying to get this building torn down for my own safety, but it's also a humanitarian crisis allowing this to continue. And I feel like I've begged, pleaded, and it's all fallen on deaf ears. I'm just wondering who is being paid to handle things like this that's uh, under underserving me. Now, Marie, it's going to take hours for this fire to be completely out, but we did get an update from fire crews earlier that said that they do have it un under control, so they don't expect it to uh, to get worse than what it is right now. So um, they're gonna keep taking turns, switching out. Uh, you can see they're bringing some oxygen tanks back and forth, supporting each other. This is like all hands on deck. Like I said, we're gonna be out here for hours, Marie. Um, we'll take it back to you in the studio. A powerful scene there with our Katie Munch. Kay, I hope you and your photographer also get a break as well. Get some place where you can get some fresh air too. Thank you for that report. Now to Hurricane Idalia rapidly intensifying over the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a live look out at the Gulf Coast of Florida. 100 mile per hour winds. You see the how the power of the water as well. Some flooding now in coastal areas being reported. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis warning residents to pay attention to evacuation warnings. The strength there seen in the ocean and behind you, uh, Bill, our chief meteorologist, tracking yeah. all of this for us tonight. Yeah, and Idalia strengthened once again, Marie, from 105 mile an hour winds now up to 110. Gusts reported by the hurricane hunters in and around the eye wall at about 125 miles an hour. And this thing is cranking along, moving to the north at 18. I want to show you what's happening with the eye. It appears to be wobbling and closing up. What's really happening, it's going through what we call an eye wall replacement cycle, which is not what Floridians want to hear because it's typically means that once this system kind of reorganizes, it is going to continue to intensify. Projected path by the Hurricane Center more up the coast here around the Big Bend region, but now landfall around 7, 8 a.m. East Coast time with estimated winds around 130 miles an hour. So projected to be a category four hurricane quickly weakening as it moves across Georgia and the Carolinas and should be kind of meandering out in the middle of the Atlantic, bending 
away from Bermuda. I want to show you Doppler radar. You see this big red box, much of the west coast of Florida and the Florida Peninsula under a tornado watch. So a lot of these outer bands really hammering areas from Fort Myers up to Tampa. And before all said and done, some areas along the west coast of Florida could see up to a half a foot of rain, not to mention storm surges 8 to 12 feet. We have our weather bug cameras up and running around the Fort Myers area, and you can see some of the feeder bands out there. Not all that bad, but definitely some wind gusts around 40 to 50 miles an hour. This is around St. Pete, around the Mahaffey Theater, moving the cameras around, but you can see the palm trees moving, and we're really starting to get socked in with some of the heavy rain. Now, Marie, speaking of rain, we got a little bit of that in our forecast along with more heat and maybe by the end of the Labor Day weekend at night, some of us may be breaking out long sleeves is a rather wild seven day forecast for late August and early September. Stick around for that. A lot of changes to track. All yeah. right, Bill, thank you. Sure. A 17 year old crashes into a police car. The latest traffic death in Clark County that's involved a minor this month and it happens. It's happening during an especially dangerous time. The coroner identifying the teen as Jean Ashley Aragon. His father set up a GoFundMe page. Metro police say Ashley Aragon ran a red light and smashed into a patrol car driving through the Flamingo and Boulder Highway intersection. The director of the Road Equity Alliance Project at UNLV says nine minors have died in crashes so far this month. We have seen this summer is a rash of young people and sometimes far too young to be driving people. We um, driving cars that are not their own. We're driving at a very high rate of speed. Um, we've just seen some crazy things. The latest crash adds to the 100 deadly days of summer that spans from Memorial Day to Labor Day. AAA reports more than 30% of deaths involving teen drivers nationwide happen during this time. Controversy surrounding an electronic dance artist who's scheduled to perform a concert at Mandalay Bay's Daylight Beach Club. His stage name is Bass Nectar, also known as Lauren Ashton, currently facing a lawsuit accusing him of sexual misconduct with minors, child pornography, even sex trafficking. He's been more or less silent over the past few years once these allegations came out. He denies them and the October show has since sold out. Still, groups like the Cupcake Girls who help sex trafficking victims are speaking up. We're seeing people not only be celebrated after they've had these kind of allegations, especially from folks that were underage when they were being groomed by this person. It's super concerning. It's concerning that we as a community are putting a stamp of this is OK. Um, this is not the standard that we want to be holding Las Vegas to. An attorney for the artist sending us a statement saying our client is under no obligation to put his life and career on hold because of false allegations and adding that it's meritless. Mandalay Bay and Daylight Beach Club have not responded to our request for comment. Crews are starting repairs on the road to Mount Charleston. This is footage from Sky 3 capturing the damage. Giant chunks of road washed away during storms. According to NDOT, crews will be working on State Route 157 seven days a week through the holiday. There will be daily traffic restrictions in effect starting tomorrow. An estimated date of completion not announced. For a full list of closures, you can visit the story on News3LV.com. An emergency declaration signed by the governor allowing this work to be expedited, but Uber says it has now created unintended consequences for its riders. The rideshare company says it's had to pause surge pricing. The practice increases the cost of rides during periods of high demand, putting more money in drivers' pockets. Clark County Commissioner Tick Siegerblum tells us that he isn't sure if taking up the issue in the legislature is the long-term solution, but he believes it's still something that we should focus on, especially with big events like Formula One coming up. I think Uber drivers need to be, get the surge payments because the drivers can be so uh, congested that this takes a lot longer, especially with the traffic, with the construction on the strip. So they're going to spend a lot more time on what, any given ride, and you need surge pricing for that. Uber drivers frustrated by the lack of pay are expected to rally outside Uber's headquarters near 215 in Decatur tomorrow morning at 10. 
We're inching closer to our $1.5 million fundraising goal for children at St. Jude, many of them winning their battle with cancer thanks in part to campaigns like this one, our St. Jude Dream Home Giveaway. This week, we're introducing you to Zoe. And because of St. Jude, this brave girl beat cancer and she now takes that same zeal to the mat as a martial artist. She's won countless awards, including gold at the National Karate Championship in Reno. Her sensei and mom could not be prouder. It brought a tear to my eye. And she continues to be a self-motivator. I'm just extremely proud of her. And you can hear her full story on News3LV.com. In the meantime, we hope you can help us give more children like Zoe a fighting chance. Get your $100 ticket for a chance to also win our St. Jude Dream Home giveaway. You'll also be entered to win a VIP Raiders fan experience. It includes two club seats at the 50 yard line, private lounge access and a $500 gift card to further enjoy the experience. Call the number there on your screen or scan the code now. How do voters view the Republican field after that fiery debate in Wisconsin? I'm Scott Thuman with a look at who saw a dip and who's gaining ground. We're getting our first good look so far at how the Republican field is shaping up after last week's debate in Wisconsin. Who may have new life? And did former President Trump skipping the events cost him any support? Sinclair's chief political correspondent Scott Thuman takes a look. With the arrests and court cases piling up, Donald Trump's numbers on the way down. The overall leader appears to have taken a hit suddenly giving a bit more hope to his competition based on a new post-debate poll. Emerson College noting Trump's snub may open door for other candidates. Trump, who declined to attend, saw a slight dip, losing six points. Former Vice President Mike Pence ticked up four, and Nikki Haley saw the biggest bump, jumping five points. I think in the first 72 hours, we raised a million dollars. We've had thousands of people volunteer. It only keeps us more motivated because we have a country to save. The surge possibly for touting her foreign policy gravitas or willingness to blame her own party for some of Washington's out of control spending. And Pence reminded voters how he stood up to Trump on January 6th. Almost everybody on that stage yep. uh, made it clear uh, that I did my duty that day. Even though they all still trail Trump by a large margin, they could see this as a first step, that if Trump's not going to dominate the debates, they'll take that time to build name recognition and with it, momentum. Trump's campaign team tells us he'll skip September's debate too. And as critics say Ron DeSantis fell flat on stage, a bonus for newcomer Vivek Ramaswamy, who had the largest number of respondents say he won the debate. I believe I can take the America First agenda even further than Donald Trump did. Though Democrats believe the more exposure these candidates have, the more ironically it will hurt them. The party that used to wrap themselves in the flag is the party that's talking about banning books, changing the voting age from 18 to 25. They are talking about all of these things that are extreme, and that's not where the mainstream of the American people are. But for GOP contenders, they see even the slightest change as a chance to shake up all those political predictions. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. More help from Southern Nevada all the way to the island of Maui. The housing company Boxable wants to donate nearly 250 small homes to those who lost their houses in the wildfires. The company needs money, though, to send the homes to Maui. I think we can make a huge impact to giving these people some relief and uh, we're looking to get that done ASAP. We want to get these houses on a boat out to Hawaii as soon as possible. Now those of the company say the boxable units being shipped to Maui will be turned into a community. To help out, you can donate online now. We have more information on News3LV.com. News3 is partnering with the American Red Cross to help raise donations for the islands of Hawaii in the aftermath of the wildfires. Scan the QR code on your screen to go directly to the donation link. And if you don't have your phone ready to scan now, you can find the link on News3LV.com. All right, let's turn now to your weather authority. Chief Meteorologist Bill Bellis, you were saying earlier, lots of changes for us in our own forecast. Yeah, you know, we have everything from late season heat, which we'll see tomorrow, a lot like today. Then we start to see some rain chances. The coverage still looks pretty spotty, but double digit highs over the holiday weekend wow. 
maybe some 60s at night in the foothills here as early as Saturday night. So something we normally don't see heading into September. No complaints mm -hmm. from the locals, but folks visiting. Hey, where are the hundreds? You know, we came here for the heat, right. but let's focus on what's happening down in Florida. These are our weather bug cameras. Some of the outer bands of Edalia you can see right there at Naples Grand Beach Resort. Again, pretty active out there today, but the track continues to shift away from the west coast of the Florida Peninsula and heading towards the Big Bend area, a little bit closer to Tallahassee, but you can see there a Clearwater Beach tonight. Waves have ramped up with waves of showers and even some isolated thunderstorms. Landfall again closer to Tallahassee, at least that region and Cross City. It was initially thought to be down near Cedar Key, uh, but the track continues to go northwest. So we're expecting landfall early tomorrow morning there with winds maybe as high as 130 miles an hour. That puts Edalia as a Category 4 storm. Then rakes across parts of Georgia, moves across the Carolinas, and then eventually out to sea. This is not the Hurricane Center's model or forecast. This is our high-resolution in-house model here, very similar to what the National Hurricane Center is forecasting. So meteorologist Chloe Coast and the uh, day, uh, morning crew tomorrow giving you late, the latest of what's happening down in Florida. Florida. Really not much around here. High pressure is in control, stretched out across Arizona, Southern California, and up into Southern Nevada. Clockwise wind flow. We've got that dry southwesterly flow, something we normally don't see in August. Cold fronts making their way across the region and getting close enough to interact with monsoon moisture. Now tomorrow, not even close. It's going to look and feel a lot like today. Then the changes happen on Thursday as high pressure moves over the four corners. Clockwise wind flow. We transport moisture, but I think Friday into Saturday is when the interaction between these two will be greatest, resulting in at least some scattered showers and thunderstorms. And the front will actually come through, resulting in some unseasonably cool conditions here, especially for Sunday and into Labor Day. Not expecting much on the meteorological menu for tomorrow in terms of rain. Might get a little gusty shower here Thursday evening and then Friday might see a few showers, but the bulk of the coverage in terms of greatest coverage will be across Southern Clark and into Mojave County, leaving us with about a 30% chance of showers pretty much throughout the day on Friday. Might go in an instant replay kind of mode here on Saturday before things dry out and remain cooler than normal for Sunday and Monday. Came close to the record high today, 110 set six years ago, 109 for the high today, 96 right now, dew points at 38 and that results in the relative humidity. We like it there at about 13%. Anthem, Summerlin, Centennial, take your pick. Pretty common number there, 91. Still 96 in downtown Las Vegas. Pahrump at 89, Blue Diamond 87. Boulder City is at 91. It's in the mid 60s right now. Mount Charleston, 62 there. Some of the models indicating down near freezing Sunday night in the Spring Mountains above 7,000 feet. We'll dip down to 83 here tonight. Game time temp tomorrow in the afternoon at 108, 112, 113 as you get up towards Lake Mead in the Valley of Fire. 112, Laughlin, Bullhead City. Take your pick. Prim, Sandy Valley, and Pahrump. All at 105, looking at the hot spot tomorrow, Death Valley at 116. So the triple digits, they're there. Hot one again tomorrow, 104. We'll bring it down a notch. The wind becomes an issue as the front gets close enough here. Could have some wind gusts on Thursday and Friday up to 40 miles an hour. Rain chances slight will go 10% Thursday, 30% Friday, 20% on Saturday. Again, even though the 20% is there to start the holiday weekend, I would not be canceling plans, mm. but you know the drill. Keep right. an eye to the sky for a late afternoon storm, but highs around 90. That is it for Sunday and Labor Day, and we're dropping it down to 70. That will be Labor Day morning, and that's at Harry Reid. Areas like Centennial, the Western Valley, you know, Summerlin, Mountain's Edge, maybe seeing 64, 65 degrees. Wow. September 1st of last year, we were on our way into the 110s with almost a full week of excessive heat warnings. Not even close Not this time this around. Time, yeah. We might see double digits, Marie, for highs through the middle of September. After that, we'll see how it all shakes almost out. Almost a taste of fall. Not bad. Yeah, Bill, thank you. Sure. While some Raiders were stressing the final cuts, quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is having the time of his life. Sports director Brian Salmon returns with Jimmy G's experience of a lifetime ahead in sports. And now it's time for the Virgin Hotel's Las Vegas Sports Desk. NFL cuts on Tuesday is an extremely stressful day for NFL players hoping to realize a dream. Now this is a list of all the players from the Raiders that were either waived, released, or put on the reserve injured list. I know, folks, you can't read it. I can, looking right here, I can barely read it. 
I'm blind. Anyway, you get the full list at news3lv.com. So, while those players were stressing the day, quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo was having the time of his life. Jimmy G did his best Tom Cruise Top Gun impersonation with the Thunderbirds out at Nellis Air Force Base. A ridiculously fantastic experience. Check it out. What's up guys, pro quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. About to go take a flight on this fighter jet. And guess what, you guys are coming with me. Let's go, baby. Come on, baby. Let's get it. Woo! You take off and it's kind of cool, and before you know it, you're <laughs> however many feet above the ground. This is where I'll say, hey, Jimmy, are you ready to join the 9G club? I'm good for 9. All right, that's what I like to hear, Jimmy. Let's go for it. There's only one way to find out. Yeah. All right, you ready to go? Let's go. All right. Smash on the jet. As we accelerate, I'm going to say to Jimmy, Green, That's it. That's it. Let's go. Man, that looks like a lot of fun for Jimmy G. I know our studio crew really appreciated it too. Anyway, hey, the Aces, they returned to Las Vegas for a much needed two game homestand. And after the ladies get it done with the Seattle Storm on Saturday, our local fire and police departments will take over the floor for the Battle of the Badges. That's what I'm talking about. It's the basketball edition. Hey, earlier today, I had an opportunity to catch up with Dietrich Sanford from the fire department and Officer Jordan Turner to get the trash talking started early. Beyond excited, I think uh, I had the opportunity to watch the police versus fire contact football game that was hosted just a couple months ago uh, that kind of, you know, kicked off the friendly banter uh, because fire won that game. So I'm, I'm ready for, uh, uh, if you will, a rematch or the opportunity for, you know, fire to take another W. We used to going in front of crowds. We perform in front of crowds and cameras all day long. We got a camera on our shoulder. Uh, so I don't think it's it's a lot of pressure, for, especially for my guys. We, you know, we, we hoopers. We play college level. We play high school level. Uh, some people would play pro as well. Uh, so this is, this is a, a piece of cake right here. <laughs> So how about our Aviators game? One of their 12 straight games at that beautiful Las Vegas ballpark, starting with the Salt Lake City Bees tonight. So get out and watch some baseball. Folks, that will do it for sports tonight. Uh, the Raiders are back on the field on Wednesday, gearing up for their opener September 10th. And the Aces are back on Thursday. So until then, let's rest, recover. And as always, you know what it is. It's Viva Las Vegas. Finally tonight, fans of the movie Black Panther will now have a chance to view it with a unique twist. The Henderson Symphony Orchestra will perform the entire film's musical score. You can catch the special performance on the big screen here at the Water Street Plaza in Henderson, September 29th at 8 p.m. Have a good night.